Hello, welcome to the first Moggy Method. Today I will be making my full size lantern steak. First, I cut my steel using a thin grinding blade and then mark my anvil for the set downs that I'll be doing later. Before the set downs, I do a square taper using the Bic and my two and a half pound hammer just because it moves more material. I'm marking up the steel for my set down, the first one, using the edge of the anvil. I mark that again so that I can see it through the heat. Then into the fire it goes, ready for the full set. These set downs are to make the step at the bottom of the lantern stake so that you can use your foot to press it into the ground. And a set down is basically a divot that makes bending much more precise and focused. Now I'm doing the same thing again for the second set down. The normal forging heat for mild steel, which is what I'm using, is a yellow heat also around 1300 degrees Celsius. I do my best to straighten things out as I go, it just means that I don't have to do it later when the heats are uneven. I'm marking up my anvil to measure out the fold in preparation for the fire weld, which is the fun bit. <laughs> Again, going for that nice yellow heat. It's the most malleable temperature for the steel. And I'm just looking for the mark that I made earlier and then bending it round. We're taking it all the way over. Again, working on keeping things straight. Um, this one's a bit crooked, so I'm just taking it on a different part of the anvil and bashing out that little wiggly bit. Aiming for that nice yellow heat in a focus point and not expecting the camera to be pointed at my face. Getting that fold in um, getting two pieces of bar to touch and um, run parallel to each other in prep for the fire weld. The bit that makes the fire weld work is keeping it clean, so that's the brushing. And now you're seeing the fire weld. This is liquid metal. I've changed the grain structure of the steel by taking it somewhere around 2000 degrees Celsius and compressing the structures to make two bars into one effectively. Depending on the thickness of the steel, a fire weld can take different amounts of heat. This one I can usually do in three, not including the wash heat and the building heat at the beginning. This is a great demonstration of what scale looks like. On the metal, scale is where the air around it reacts with the metal and creates these little flakes. Um, after a fire weld you need what's called wash heat. There's no welding going on, it's basically resetting the structure so that you can forge it again without it becoming brittle. Another example of scale, brushing it off, keeping everything clean and you'll be able to see in a minute where two bars become one and the grain structure is different. Go 
going back to the set from earlier, we're now bending it and you can see it bends on that weak spot where we've put that set. Once it's cooled down a little bit, we quench it, which hardens it slightly and means that the easiest bending point is going to be at the next set that we heat up rather than the first. <laughs> this final bend completes the step and uh, getting your pliers stuck isn't mandatory. Just looking down the length of it now to check how straight it is and it's not straight so I'm correcting that with a couple of taps with the hammer, it doesn't need a lot of persuasion. Once the step end is cooled but not quenched that will ruin your fire world, you heat the other end to forging temperature and use the bic to start off a rough square taper. Then use the anvil to neaten it up and get yourself sharp edges. This makes the taper cleaner. And this is me trying to work out which way I'm supposed to bend it. <laughs> from square we go to octagon by lining up the diagonals and then from octagon you go to whatever shape has got 16 sides um, and then from there to round which gives you the rough round shape. Um, then, using a forge heat, you do what we call dressing, which is lighter hammer blows. You can hear the difference in the video. Next, you take it over the edge of the anvil and do a nibbin. Don't know what the actual name of it is. I call it a nibbin. It's just for safety. It stops fabrics from snagging and also means you've not got a sharp spike sticking up in the air. Um, then you do the hook, which is where you're gonna hang whatever you're hanging on it. Um, and you use the bic for this because it's smooth enough to get those bends. For bending, you don't need the yellow heat, it's more of an orange, just because the longer and more even the heat, the smoother the bend. I use my vise for larger bending over bending forks because a vise is much more adjustable for fine tuning. Bending is probably the most time consuming bit of the job because it takes finesse. Because I make these so that you can buy multiples, I work to one that I've already made and that way they match. Um, if you don't have one that you've already made, a working drawing is obviously how you do your first one. my final checks before putting the neck into the stake. This creates a better centre of gravity for whatever's hanging from the hook. Final tweaks to make sure that everything lines up and that it's not off to one side. Final brush to get it nice and clean. I just lay it across the top of the fire to get a gentle heat. The temperature isn't exact, and I use Renaissance wax. It's a synthetic wax, which means that it lasts better than beeswax would outdoors. It's just got a little bit more resilience.
is the finished lantern stake with the step at the bottom easy enough for you to press into the ground with your foot. It's great for bird feeders, lanterns or um, flags, bunting, etc. Thanks for watching. Um, you can follow me on my social medias, subscribe to my YouTube channel and if you liked them you can purchase them from my Etsy shop. The link will be in the description.